What is real spiritual awakening? Finding peace in the present moment, no matter what is going on outside of you, to stop blaming external forces for your misery, anxiety, or suffering. That's not to say you can't feel pain sometime. Of course, if you're in an accident and your leg is hurt, you will feel pain, but you don't have to experience suffering. Suffering is when we bring our emotional baggage into the picture. Stoic philosophy school teaches to accept the things we cannot change, have the courage to change those things we can change, and the wisdom to know the difference. Download a free exercise from my book, From Fear to Freedom, The Three Golden Principles of Greek Philosophy. Hello, my dear friend, and welcome to another episode of Aikistis TV, where we go into Greek philosophy and how it can transform our life. I have a small favor to ask you, please hit that subscribe button. So many of you are watching without being subscribers. This doesn't help my channel spread. Plus, when you subscribe, you'll get early notifications for any uploads that I do. So please go ahead and hit the subscribe button now before we begin. Thank you so much. Make the present moment your friend and your whole life begins to change. Because what we call future is just an extension of your state of consciousness in the present moment. I have a number of topics for today, but mainly we're going to be talking about stress and anxiety and how to overcome it, why people suffer and how to get out of their suffering. I want to talk about a healthy relationship with your true self. So for many years, I felt like I was trapped in suffering, and I didn't know how to get out of the suffering. I had an anxious, stressful feeling that would come and go, especially at night, that would keep me up at night, uh, kind of fluttering in my heart, um, palpitations, and this, I came to realize, was simply anxiety. I could also be anxious in social settings that make me feel like I wasn't good enough or, you know, awkward. And generally, it was a sense of deep uh, angst or anxiety. Now, how can we overcome or eliminate stress and suffering and anxiety in our life? Usually, if you're not conscious of the fact that stress is operating on you, um, you feel low on energy and you also feel very defensive or get easily upset. But usually uh, how the mind operates is that we blame other people, uh, sources outside of ourselves that are making us miserable. No matter how much you practice positive thinking, which is, of course, a wonderful thing to do, there will always be things that are problematic. Life always seems to present challenges to you, no matter what stage you're in in your life. Even if you become very wealthy or live a dream life, according to other people, you'll soon realize that situations will appear on your screen uh, kind of just popping out of nowhere, making your life miserable. Now, the beginning of awakening for people out of their suffering is the realization that most of the psychological suffering arises from stories that you're telling yourself in your mind about situations. Stories or narrative that you are telling yourself about your life and your situation. As a practical exercise to introduce this t teaching to people, I sometimes recommend that the next time you find yourself in a situation in which suffering arises, 
And I mean, from in the whole spectrum, from feeling a little irritated or upset about something minor or to the other end of the spectrum where you feel depression or despair or sadness, you can practice this technique, which is called prosohi in Greek and mindfulness in the Buddhist philosophy. So let's just say you're at the airport and you're in a lineup that is moving very slow, or perhaps you're in a traffic jam or on a telephone where no one's answering or you get this automated message. You're bored, then you get angry, and finally you get irritated. And now you start uh, thinking to yourself, how would I experience this situation if I didn't add any interpretation or any thought to it? How would I experience this moment if I didn't add any thought to it, if I didn't interpret it in any way and just allowed it to be without burdening it with this baggage of thought? If I just practiced no thinking for a moment, just empty space, silence. In other words, if you didn't say, this is bad, this is terrible, this sucks, and all the other thoughts that come after that. Because when you say, this is bad, then the, f- the next thought comes is, my life is bad, my life sucks, F this, or poor me, why does this always happen to me? And down those toxic tunnels, as I call them. So if you just said, let's take a time out to this compulsive habit uh, of creating stories in my mind, uh, interpreting events, judging events, and even for a few moments, how would I experience this moment? Without adding any thought to it, just being a witness to what's happening. This would bring your attention into the present moment. So your attention moves into the presence and in this present moment, you're standing or sitting somewhere and you're just breathing. That's right. Just observe your breath for a moment. Relax your facial muscles. Relax your shoulders. You look around yourself and just observe without getting irritated Just observe in silence. You pay attention to yourself. You're breathing. You're perceiving things. And suddenly you may find that this moment is actually free of suffering. You are inwardly free. The suffering was not caused by the external circumstance. It is what is caused by the narratives in your mind about this circumstance. That's a huge distinction, and this is what it means to begin to live consciously. Until you realize that you have been living unconsciously, which in spiritual terms means to be totally identified with whatever your mind is telling you, it means you totally believe the narrative in your story, in your mind, that the one that's just popping up without question. In other words, you don't reflect on your thoughts, You're, you haven't You've just allowed the stories or the voice in your head telling you, see how bad things are, or this is how things should be. Why aren't they this way? Why isn't reality living up to my expectations? Things should be different. Okay, when you start questioning this thought, you will really begin to liberate yourself. Thousands of years ago, the Greek philosopher Epictetus taught Most of your suffering is derived from what your mind is telling you about the situation, but not from the situation itself. And that's an enormous realization that can be the beginning of liberating yourself, to see the narrative in your mind is mostly what's causing your suffering. There are circumstances where you're an external situation may cause you physical discomfort or pain. For example, you hurt your leg or your back is hurting, here and now. 
But again, it's what you tell yourself about the moment that's very important. And you must be conscious of your thoughts. Try to assist yourself, help yourself, encourage yourself. In other words, you can feel pain, but you don't have to feel suffering. You don't have to sabotage your energy and your life and yourself and your thoughts, right? Help yourself out in these situations. You begin to realize that most suffering arises from the mental narrative about a situation or about your circumstances, but not from the circumstances themselves. If you focus on the negativity, it will literally block your brain from concentrating or finding solutions and ways out of the situation to the next present moment. The Stoic school of philosophy tells us to have the serenity to accept the things we cannot change, the courage to change those things we can change, and have the wisdom to know the difference. So you can begin to practice this every time you feel anger or other such thoughts arising in you, where you're blaming people in situations and saying, this shouldn't be happening. Your spiritual awakening can be triggered by these situations. You can look forward to these situations because you can take it as a kind of game where you will either go down the toxicity tunnel or you will choose psychological liberation, spiritual awakening, and realize that the story you're telling yourself about the situation is simply limiting yourself. There are millions of people in this world who live with a very painful sense of identity. They perceive themselves as carrying a heavy burden. So they live with this heaviness and they don't realize that this heaviness is actually a narrative they're telling themselves. They say, that's me. All the things that have happened to me are dreadful or that specific event ruined my life. These absolute statements, this self-wallowing is not going to help you out. Or even when you blame yourself, for example, I'm to blame for all the bad things that happen to my son or daughter or, you know, it's all my fault. This heavy identity builds up and becomes your sense of self. And people don't realize it, but it's just a story you're continuously telling yourself in your mind. It may even be stories that your family has told you before you. And you're so identified with this story that without it, you don't exist. It becomes your life story, your identity. Your true self, your free self is outside of this story. As the Greek philosopher Socrates or Buddha or all the other great teachers taught, self-liberation is the only way out of this misery. So now when you realize this is the case, this means that at this point of realization, another dimension of consciousness has risen in you, which is not exactly in your mind. We can call this awareness presence or your deeper or higher self, uh, your higher consciousness, however you like to call it. This technique for withholding the incessant flow of inner chatter is actually called proeresis in Greek and was taught by Aristotle and the Stoics. This ability to know what your mind is doing will transform your life quality. It's quite simple. Just observe your thoughts without judgment and simply say, that's interesting. I see what my mind is doing now. And simply observe it. Let's see what would happen if we just turned off that negative judgment. Approach this experience with curiosity, like a scientist tinkering with a radio, tuning into another frequency, the frequency of inner peace rather than toxic stress. 
And then a wonderful thing happens when you allow this moment to just be and to allow yourself to lower the intensity of the, the story and the chattering mind. Your sense of identity shifts and expands. At first, this practice will be a bit uncomfortable for you because you're so used to having this old story of you, your past, your memories, your beliefs, things that you're so certain about. These stories that have just accumulated in the back of your mind from the past and that you've told yourself all these years. You've said, this is happening to me and that's what's wrong with me and this is why I'm not good enough or this person did this to me or whatever story you've told yourself. And now when this awareness rises, your sense of who you are, your sense of identity can begin to shift from being deeper lodged in the conceptual mind and really allow yourself this dimension of consciousness beyond ego thinking. This is what Plato called the view from above. Imagine a a bird's eye view of your life. This shift in consciousness gives you a glimpse of who you really are, the observer of the story, the meta-mind beyond the chattering mind, the grand presence beyond your physical brain and body. Herein lies your peace and clarity that will make you make the best of every situation. Try it out and tell me how it goes for you. Let me know in the comments below. And as always, make sure you have subscribed to this channel. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode of Alkistis TV.